Problem 9. All right, a large insulating sheet has a surface charge density of sigma. What is the electric field strength near the lens insulating sheet? Oh, this guy's. That's easy. Not difficult at all. Oh, draw a little picture. Yep, you're good. Yep, yep. All right. Make some positive charges. I think I'll go back to blue. I enjoy blue. Oh, positive, positive, positive. And then take the easy road, copy paste, copy paste, and maybe one more copy paste. There we go. So the idea here is we have a formula that we have memorized, and you're probably actually given it to, uh, where E equals, let's see, K sigma over two epsilon naught. No, it's uh, sigma over two epsilon naught. Two. I can write it better. There we go. Over epsilon naught. So we have a plate sigma over two epsilon naught. Bam. So not hard. All right. Next question. A large flat. Ah. So the difference here is this guy, insulator. This guy, conductor has a surface charge density of sigma, what is electric field strength just inside the flat surface of the conductor? Okay, so there's two differences here. Once they have just ins inside, this has near, which they don't say um, inside or outside. So for the first one, inside or outside doesn't matter because it's an um, it's a, uh, insulator. So all the charges are stuck in place. Um, but for a conductor, the charges are all going to be on the surface because all the charges are trying to get as far away from each other as possible. And when you're on the surface, that's how they'll be as far away as possible. So if you're here or you're here, it's not going to matter with an insulator. But for a conductor, what we have here is I'm going to try and steal this guy. Copy, paste. Heck yeah. And then I'm going to try and sneakily copy only the charges, make them s super small. Can I do that? Is that even possible? No, it does not want me to make them super small. Hmm, that's okay. I can make them super small. Small charges. Close enough. And copy paste. Move up here. And, hmm, sorry, little buddy. There we go. And then we'll do that a couple more times. And one more time. All right. Actually, I'm going to do this now one more time. Copy paste. <laughs> Peter's having a little bit of trouble here. All right, so the idea is for a conductor, they're on the very surface. So when they say just inside, these are actually supposed to be on the very top. So just inside would mean it right here, so no charges. So idea is there is no electric field inside a conductor. Long story short, bam. Hopefully I'll get to use this picture again because that was a lot of work for just one problem. Okay, what is the electric field just outside the surface, flat surface of the conductor? Okay, so now... The idea here is, um, for the first one, they t told they asked us about the surface. They gave us a sigma, a charge per square meter. And what it meant was, um, basically, you cut this up into sections, square meters, and you use that. Well, for a conductor, it really kind of sort of has um, two surfaces. It has a top surface and a bottom surface. and so it basically means it has twice as many charges as well. So since it has twice as much surface area, because you count the top and the bottom, it's going to be two sigma over two epsilon naught, or sigma over epsilon naught. So what you're going to get is this answer right here. And the way you see that is, you look at this guy, a whole bunch of charges in the middle, they're all, all everywhere, and when they 
and they say uh, surface area, they don't necessarily uh, mean surface area, they mean sections based on uh, the, the surface area. And for here, with a conductor, you have two surfaces. And if you look at it as individual charges, you know, this charge is going to have a charge going both directions, and then this charge is going to have it going both directions as well. So what happens is in the middle, they're going opposite directions. This, this guy is from this particle is going up, and this guy from this particle is going down, so they cancel out and give you zero on the inside. But when you get outside of the conductor, you're going to have twice the effect. When you superpose the um, fields, you're going to get double. Raise those guys because they don't look pretty and I don't like them. You know, not that beauty is everything, but eh. I'm going to say it is, at least for this problem. <clears throat> All right. A solid met metallic sphere of radius A carries a total charge Q. Seems reasonable. No other charges are nearby. The electric field just outside its surface is KEQ over A squared. True. OK, yeah. Radially outward. At this point, the uniformly charged surface of the sphere looks exactly like a uniform flat sheet of charge. What is the electric field strength inside the metallic sphere at R equals A over 2? All right, so I draw a picture of my sphere. But I'm going to draw the sphere using a circle because that's pretty much all I got with me right now. All right, so the idea here is it's a metallic sphere, so the charges are on the outside, and so there's going to be no uh, electric field on the inside. There is no electric field inside a conductor, so zero. Okay, so what is the electric field strength just outside the metallic sphere? All right, so now this guy gets complicated. I'm going to copy this because that's our picture of our sphere, but we're looking at just a small section of it. I'm going to say specifically, let's use, ooh, is that magenta? This section right there, bam, that's our section. And they're saying kind of like when you're walking around, you can't tell that um, the Earth is round, and grav we say that gravity is down. Well, and we say it's uh, uniformly down. It's not uniformly down. It's actually curved, but the curvature of the Earth is so uh, slight that everything basically looks flat from where we're standing. So what we're saying is that this section now looks like this, but all the charges are on the outside. This is a plane, so the charges are only going to be on that section on top. So there's no charges on the inside because they're all trying to get as far away from each other. So even though it's the straight, it's actually kind of bent. And that very slight bending is calling it, causing all the charges to be at the outside. Um, yep. So unlike the infinite plane, this infinite plane, which is approximate, an approximation of a small section of the circle, is going to have charges on only one side, as opposed to our infinite plane previous, which had it on both sides. OK, so I am still wed to the idea that the electric field for, ooh, I didn't realize it's still had magenta. What a pleasant surprise. K, Q over R squared. So I believe that's true because it is always true in life. <coughs> I used R, but they used A. That's fine. Now they say here, that sigma equals this right here. So I'm going to rewrite this as Q equals, get bigger, 4 pi A squared sigma. I just rearranged the equation. Okay. Copy. So here then, we're going to be able to say, I'm going to replace the Q. This is going to be 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times 4 pi a squared sigma 
over r squared. Hmm. Okay, I can go for this. So then we're saying very close to the surface. So the idea here is if this is the surface, then you know, all the way from the center, that's A right here, drawn A. And all the way from the tip right here, that's going to be R. A is pretty much the same as R. So it's kind of like if you have a basketball two feet above the surface of the Earth, it's pretty much the radius of the Earth from the center. So same concept. So I'm going to say that A and R are the same, so I'm going to cancel them. I'm going to cancel in blue, though. I'm going to use the excuse that because canceling makes me sad, makes me blue, but really just creates better contrast. Four pies cancel. And I think that's all we got. So now we have a sigma over epsilon naught. Hmm. 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 How peculiar. Because honestly, I expected. Hmm. <laughs> R equals A over 2. No, no, it's previous question. So I honestly expected to get the equation where it would be like an insulator. But in this case, we got it as if it was a conductor. And it might be because. Hop, hop. I'm going to see if this works. Way over on the other side, we have, this is the, you know, on the other side of the circle, kind of the China equivalent to the United States, where everyone in China stands upside down. Um, that even though it's far away, the other side has an effect on it. Therefore, we're going to get the same uh, result as if it was a conductor. Yeah, I'm going to go with that. I'm going to say true. So this is the answer I'm going to go with. If for some reason it doesn't go for it, go for the second. Go for the over 2. That would be my second guess. My first guess is sigma over epsilon naught. All right. So now a solid metallic sphere is a place with a hollow insulating shell of radius A. A charge Q is spread uniformly over the hollow sphere. What is electric field strength? inside the hollow sphere at A over 2. Okay, so get our sphere. This is a picture of my conducting sphere, but I'm just going to say it's now insulating. So we have a point right here, where here's the center, and that's A over 2 away. And I'm going to draw myself some lines. Hop. Line. That's a pretty good line. Then I'm going to do another line. Oh, through. There we go. Bam. And so what's happening here is inside a shell, you're going to have um, zero electric field. Because all these points right here, I'm going to say, they create positive electric fields, and it's going to create a strong positive electric field going this way. Now, all these points are farther away, so they're going to create a small electric field, but there's more of them, and they will exactly cancel each other out. So at any point within the insulating shell, you're going to have zero electric field. And it's not because it's a conductor. It's due to the geometry of the shell. Oh, but it's also a conductor, so heck. Uh, oh, no. This is replaced with a hollow insulating shell. Okay. Hollow insulating shell. So, and that and the uh, no charge is due to geometry, not the fact that it's a conductor. What is the electric field strength just outside of the hollow insulating shell? Hmm. So all the logic I used for this guy up here is going to apply now to this problem right here. Before we had started with insulator, and then went to conductor. We got a different answer. 
but now we went from a conductor to an insulator, and I think we're going to get the same answer. So I'm going to say that we're going to get the exact same answer as before, because all the logic, same logic applies. So but now this time, instead of the electric charges being at the edge, they're going to be slightly down. But it's going to be um, an insignificant um, amount down, so it's fine. So, hmm. yep, I'm going to say we're good here. So I'm going to say exact same, exact same logic that we had with this problem now applies to this one. So the only trick here is with the metal with the metal sphere, we didn't have charges on the inside. There will not be charges on the inside of the sphere, only on the outside. And that's all we have for this problem. Hmm, interesting. Interesting. Well done. I like that problem. It's pretty good. All right, on to number 10.